Happy New Year, and I hope you have a list of New Year's resolutions for 2021, and specifically some filmmaking New Year's resolutions. And if you do, if you have them in mind, go ahead and comment them below. I'd love to see what you guys are up to and what your goals are. And I'd love to try to tinker the content on this channel to help support those resolution. So go ahead and do that. I have a really fun video for you today. Today we are going to be talking about overexposure and I have a plethora of test footage uh, that we're going to look through and see if overexposing your image makes for a more professional image. That's not a fact. This is more of a hypothesis because this is going to be a test. And since the test, let me explain how this is going to work. We're going to start the exposure test at an F2 and we're going to light to that. This will be our control image, a properly exposed image where the f-stop on our camera matches the intensity of our key light. Then I will increase the intensity of our lights by a stop, a stop and a half, and then finally two stops without changing the camera settings. Then we'll slap on a grade, see which one looks best, and make our final decisions. Now let's not waste any more time and let's get right into this overexposure test. This is the raw file of our image. I'm using the Blackmagic Pocket 6K for this shoot. I've rigged it up and it looks pretty freaking awesome if I do say so myself. Okay, so my camera settings are shown at the bottom left. On the bottom right, I have the intensity of my key light and backlight labeled in f-stops. This is our control image, a properly exposed image because our key light intensity matches the f-stop on our camera. In this test, the backlight will always be one and a half stops darker than our key. Now that we've gotten all the technical stuff out of the way, let's slap on this grade. This is more of a high key look, overall a very bright image. And we have some nice bokeh in the background with our Christmas tree. Our key light is more frontal, but we are getting a soft shadow around the nose and below the chin, and the back lines hitting her hair nicely and also touching her shoulder. What we are looking for here is overall image quality, and we're gonna take a look at the noise levels and see if we can see a visible difference. Next is our one-stop overexposed. In the raw image, it does not look overexposed at all. We are going to put the same grade we had on originally to see the increase in brightness. Okay, so it's definitely bright, but it's not unusable or over the top with this grade. Now let's make our overexposed image match the control. Right off the bat, it looks a little richer. That could just be my eyes playing tricks on me, but that's my first impression. As we push in, the skin still looks good. The shadows look a little lifted, but we have retained all the detail in the shot. Next, we have a stop and a half overexposed. In the raw, it looks a little brighter, but we're not clipping on our cheek or forehead, so we're still in the clear and have maintained the detail on the highlights. Now with the original grade, we can see that this is crazy bright compared to our control. And as we bring it down, she just pops out of the image. You can argue she may be a little bright compared to the background, but her skin tone still looks good and overall, I think it looks very nice. Lastly, we're going up by two stops. For reference, this is four times brighter when compared to our control. So this is what four times brighter looks like with the same grade. Just ridiculously bright in comparison. We got the point, so let's bring it back down. This actually looks pretty darn good to me as well. The biggest change I see is maybe a little less contrast, maybe the white shirt is a little brighter here. This is gonna be tougher than I originally thought going into this. So let's start comparing side by side. A really quick look at the raw footage, but as we said, even at two stops, which is four times as bright as the control, we are not clipping on our skin at all. We're maintaining all of that highlight detail. So if we take away one thing from this video so far, it's that we have a lot of leeway in the upper end of our range shooting Blackmagic RAW, like a ton. I'm curious to see how far I could have pushed this image, but I only went to two stops, so that might be a test for another day. Control versus one stop. First thing I see here is a color thing, and that could be a variable in the color grade, but it looks like her skin is a bit more reddish in the control. They look pretty close. We can see her skin just simply looks brighter overall, but that could probably be reduced if the same amount of warmth was in her skin tone. Let's hold on to that thought and move on to control versus 1.5 stops. Okay, this was a much better grade match. You can see her skin is very close in color and warmth, 
Your skin is noticeably brighter, but not in a bad way. It still looks very good. And there is a bit less contrast in the 1.5 stop image, mostly around her right cheek where her hair is falling. That makes perfect sense because we're bringing up the light levels and that will automatically bring up our fill level. You may have noticed that the background though has gone a little dark. And that's because the intensity of the Christmas tree lights were not able to get any brighter when compared to our control image. So in order to match the light intensity on Annie's face, the background had to darken a bit. This looks pretty nice. And for reference, the key is 1.5 stops over, which means the backlight is now at a F2. So the hair light is properly exposed for our camera. Now let's move on to two stops over and wow, they look pretty identical as well. Something that shoots out at me immediately is you can really tell the lift in the shadows here. The highlights in the face are looking a little harsher, but they're not clipped. But the hair light coming in still looks very good. And for reference, since this is two stops over, that means the hair light is now a half stop overexposed in this image. And keep in mind, even though I mentioned the lesser amount of contrast in her face, this image is still very solid in terms of color and overall contrast as an image as a whole. So it's not desaturated or looks bland in any way when I'm saying that. It's just really small differences between the images in terms of the contrast on her face. So I'm looking at this footage from a 4K ProRes 422 HQ file. It's a lot to say, but you're looking at it on YouTube. So it's a very compressed file. So hopefully you can see the same thing that I'm seeing. But when I zoomed in around 460%, I could see less noise in the overexposed images. I can clearly see that on my computer. Granted, I'm like two inches away from the monitor when I'm looking at this, but I hope you guys can see it too. Take a look at the noise levels on her face, specifically on her cheek and hair area around right here. It does decrease when we hit 1.5 stops and two stops. I see a noticeable difference in that range. I hope you can see this because I'm seeing it on my screen. I'm getting really excited about it. Um, I don't know if you can see it on YouTube. I'll have to check once I upload this. But if you really want to see what I'm seeing, I have this clip. Um, for download in the description below so you can download it yourself. It's about a gig and a half roughly. Um, I know kind of big, but this is ProRes 422. So if you want, you can download that and see the same thing that I'm seeing here. I'd say 1.5 stops is probably the place to be. Two stops doesn't look like a bad um, a look either, but I'd say for that extra half stop of light, you're not getting the same amount of noise um, reduction. I also did this same test with the background um, because it's not being actually lit. I wanted to see if the noise levels decrease there at all. And I actually didn't find really any major difference like I did before. And the way I can describe that and sum that up is because when we're putting extra light into the image, we're directing it towards our subject. We don't have a set light in this test. I only have two lights. So it was a key and a backlight. And since we weren't adding any more light to the background, I didn't really expect the noise to decrease at all. And it really didn't. Now, if I had another light that was able to blast the background with some light, then maybe we could possibly see some noise reduction throughout the entire image. But for right now, for this test, it's really centered on our subject and doesn't have that much effect in terms of noise on the background. All in all guys, let me know what you think of this video in the comments and which shot is your favorite or even if you saw a difference on YouTube, I hope you did. But if not, remember there's that clip for download in the description box. A little disclaimer, probably should have said this in the beginning of the video, but unless you're shooting raw or a ProRes file or some type of log, you probably won't have the same results as I did in this test. If you're shooting uh, basic camera settings with the color ingrained and basically all of the camera information ingrained in the footage that you shoot, you probably won't have the same results, and especially in terms of dynamic range. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. If you have any content suggestions, throw them down in the comments. I take a look at them, it always helps, and I wanna be making content that you guys wanna see. Once again, Happy New Year if you're watching this when I posted this video. If you're watching it down the line, I hope 2021 started off great for you and you're working on your filmmaking, continuing to get better every single day. If you're looking for some free filmmaking tools, it's in the description below. You can download those and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video, even though you already know it's every Friday.